One of the biggest limitations with ChatGPT is that it's only trained on information up to 2021. So this means that you're not able to write on factual or more recent content using ChatGPT. And this can be a big issue if you're creating um, blog posts and you need to write on more up-to-date information. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how you can use ChatGPT to write more up-to-date blog posts and include more recent content within your articles or blog posts. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you'd want to do is get access to GPT-4. You can do the same process on GPT-3.5 Turbo, but I find that you're able to get much better outputs using the GPT-4 model. So for example, let's say I wanted to generate a high quality article about Google Bard and talk all about the new AI by Google. So I was able to get some outputs here using GPT-4 because I think GPT-4 actually is able to give you much more up-to-date information. I have done some trials and it seems as though you are able to get more um, information that's a little bit more recent compared to the older GPT-3 models. So we do get some information back here about Google Bard and some of the use cases, but you don't really get any in-depth information in terms of you know what Google Bard is built on when it was released um, how it's been trained and it's exactly what type of um, use cases you have for Google Bard so while we do get some decent output here that I was fairly surprised by by GPT-4 in order to get more factual content um, more data included within your articles and more live um, information you want to go ahead and copy that content from Google paste it into GPT-4 and then tell it to use that information to generate a blog post. So I'll show you what that looks like. First, just head over to Google and then you want to find as much information as you can about that topic in which you're trying to write about. In order to get the most factual article, you want to get um, high quality data. So I would recommend going to the source if you can, if you're trying to write um, content. So for example, if you're writing about Google Bard, then you want to get content from Google. If you're writing about the new iPhone, you'd want to get information from Apple. So for this example, we'll be copying all of the content here from this um, announcement by Google and we're just going to use this and paste it into uh, GPT-4. The great thing about GPT-4 is that you can paste in a lot of content and it can use that content to generate your articles for you. So I'm just going to start by pasting in that content and I'm going to go ahead and get some more um, information here about Google Bard. So again, I found another blog post here. I'm going to copy the content and we're going to paste this over into um, chat gpt because gpt4 has such a large um, token limit you can add about 2000 to 2500 words um, within this section here and you'll still be able to get a fairly long article so i've went ahead and pasted in one more article so we have quite a lot of content here about google bard so now that what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell um, chat GPT to use this content and create a blog post using only factual information about Bard. So I've told chat GPT to use this information below, write a factually correct information article about what is Google Bard, be as in-depth as possible and use the information below, but do not plagiarize and write in your own words. This is very important because you don't want to just spit out that information. You can add background information and examples on your own if needed, write in markdown and add tables and list. So for some reason, I keep running into an issue while using GPT-4 on ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and use the playground mode, which is essentially the same. It's just a little bit more on the back end and you have some more customization options, but it's entirely the same process. Um, so I've just went ahead and pasted in our um, content and I've also went ahead and pasted in our prompt. So now that that's all in here, let's go ahead and click submit and we should start getting some content here back from the AI. Okay, so it's starting to generate. As you can see here, it has the title, Google Bard, uh, and it has an intro there. And now it's talking about what is Google Bard, and it'll continue to give us more um, up-to-date information. As you can see here, it talks about the LAMDA model, and um, we have some specific ex examples here, again, that were pulled from the information in which we um, prompted it. Okay, so the content has finished generating, so I'm just gonna copy this over and convert this just so that it's much easier to read. Okay, so this is the full content here. As we can see, it's very well formatted. It talks about what Google Bard is, um, how does it work, AI powered features in search, empowering developers with AI, bold and responsible AI development, language models. So what um, both of the ChatGPT and the LAMDA are built on, use cases, updated information. So it tells us that ChatGPT is only available in 2021, whereas Google Bard has the potential to use up-to-date information for responses, availability, integration with search engines, the feature of AI conversational assistance. Okay, so that's really cool and a conclusion. So let's see how many words we're able to generate here. I think it's about maybe a thousand. So about 955 words. 
and honestly it's a fairly decent output if we compare this to the first article in which we generated um, just by asking gpt4 as you can see this is much more detailed it has more up-to-date information it's more relevant because it's talking about comparisons with chat gpt and other um, ai tools and it also talks about the future of um, ai chat boxes and responsible use cases of ai chat boxes so much more relevant content here definitely a much higher quality um, output because again we're able to feed um, better information into the ai so that's why i really like using gpt4 because you have those abilities um, to be able to feed the ai content and then have it write content in its own words so let's go ahead and do a quick test and just make sure that um, it hasn't plagiarized any of this content so i'm going to do a plagiarism checker just to see that none of the content was actually plagiarized Okay, so according to Grammarly, there was no plagiarism found, none whatsoever. And the second plagiarism tool said about 5% was plagiarized, which is not bad by any means. That's only one or two sentences out of the whole article that was considered to be plagiarized. So that's a pretty um, good number. I'm happy with 95% uniqueness and 5% plagiarism, um, especially when we feed, fed it a lot of information, right? It was able to follow our instructions and it was able to write content that wasn't um, plagiarized. So as you can see, you're not gonna have any issues with plagiarized content um, if you do use this method, but you're able to write much more up-to-date and um, able to include more factual information into your blog posts and articles. So again, just going over the method, all you need to do is paste in any information about the topic in which you're trying to write about. The higher quality the information, the better because you get better outputs. And then you wanna tell the AI to use this information below and write an informative and in-depth blog post about what that topic is about. You can also tell it to feel free to use their own information and add examples and background knowledge that may be useful for that blog post, but focus on using the information provided. Be sure not to plagiarize the content, but write the blog post in your own words. Use markdowns. This is just better for formatting and lists and tables. Again, it just looks better. And then you can have um, your word count included in there. And as you can see, you are able to get a fairly decent output um, as you saw in today's example. So let me know if you guys like this method. Let me know if you've used it and if you're able to to generate some higher quality um, articles with more factual data. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll also be leaving this prompt in the comments below. So if you need to use it, you can always copy it easily and use it within um, your content creation. If you enjoyed today's video, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.